feeling good, like I should. When in Durku, walk around the neighborhood, feeling blessed, never stressed. Happy Monday. Welcome back to the grapevine. Starting off the week, we have Lauren Boyd and Megan Zeilinger with an update from administration. Hi, MVRHS. It's Miss Dingledye. I just wanted to make sure that I got on the grapevine to say how much we miss you and how much we hope that we will be back together again before the school year ends. I'm not sure if everyone else is in that same boat uh, in terms of students, but I can tell you that the staff is really anxious to see you, to hear you, to um, feel the energy in the hallway. It is just not the same day in and day out without uh, being together as a community. So fingers crossed that we'll be back together before June. We also wanted to be here. Mr. Light and I decided we would make ourselves available to answer any questions that students may have about things coming up. Some things we may know, some things we may not have an answer to, uh, but I know the seniors put out a survey to see if anyone had any questions to field us and uh, we're here to answer them. Okay, awesome. So the first question we have is, will these grades affect what classes we can take next year? So in all likelihood, these grades and, and what you get in quarter three and quarter four can only help. Um, quarter three, we had six weeks of that and uh, we closed out the quarter early. And so we know those grades may not be fully indicative of what you can do. Um, but we're hoping in many cases, it actually helps demonstrate what you were doing for second semester. The fourth quarter, it's pass fail. But certainly if you work really hard quarter four and you stay engaged and you contact your teacher and there's a course that you were reaching for over the course of the year, perhaps an AP or an honors class, they will definitely take that effort into consideration. We wanna give everyone the opportunity to take challenging classes. And if people demonstrate that they're up for that challenge during this, which is probably one of the most challenging times, um, I am sure that will weigh into any recommendations that you need to take challenging courses. Yeah, you also want to keep your skills sharp, you know, ready to go for when you move on to the next portion of the course. Example, if you're in US 1, moving on to US 2, you want to make sure you have that content ready so that you can build upon your sophomore, your junior, or your senior year. Yeah, and I think that's really important a lot of times with math, science, language, is just to make sure you're keeping up with those skills so that the next level of the course isn't so hard the first semester. Okay. Um, the next question we have is, do I have to attend every Zoom? No, not every Zoom, but we want you to be engaged. It's hard to um, be clear with this expectation because we know that things happen. We know that people are working. We know they have siblings and there are things that can get in the way. Um, but really, we want to make sure that people are engaged and in contact with their teacher. So if you can't attend a Zoom class, what we're asking you to do is reach out with an email figure out office hours, find a way to connect as an alternative, and try as hard as you can to keep those two hours, uh, 10 to 12, as clear as possible. Um, and if it's impossible to, to connect with us to let us know why and figure out an alternate plan. It's, it's also, you know, opportunity to get your day going, you know, get out of bed before uh, noon, and just get into these good habits that all of the great bond students have been, uh, you know, preaching to you, because I know that in the long run is going to help you keep on somewhat of a consistent schedule. Yep. Um, the last question I have is, is there going to be a graduation for us seniors? It may not look the way every other graduation has looked on the island, but maybe, um, you know, it is such a unique class. The seniors are such a remarkable and special group. Um, maybe the silver lining is they're going to get a special and unique graduation. We don't know for sure, um, but there will absolutely 100% be a celebration uh, that's worthy of the senior class. I think all of us, hands down, are so, um, we're so sad that it's been such an unpredictable and kind of unexpected end to this senior class's senior year. Um, they have been a fantastic group and every, I mean, I cannot imagine another group of students that's more deserving of a special um, a special day and a special ceremony. So we will make every effort. I know Matt and Amy are working with the senior officers. Um, they put together a group of parents who are interested to, to start talking about what it's going to be. And all I can tell you is that there will be something for sure. It just may look a little different than what the traditional MVRHS graduation has looked like. A uh, question I have is, are finals going to be postponed or canceled? 
Whew, I think, you know, I'm assuming we'll get an announcement soon about what's happening. It's, you know, if there's going to be an extension from May 4th or if that's actually going to just stay put. I think we're waiting for the guidance from the state. I can't imagine we would postpone them. So I think they're going to either happen or they will be canceled. I don't think we're going to go late um, into June to, to make sure that we get finals done. I think there'll just be a judgment call of, of calling it a year with the quarter four. Or if we come back to school, then maybe we'll have them. What do I have to do to pass a class? <laughs> Mr. Light, you want to try and field that one? So oh, I think it's a combination of just being engaged through completing your, your coursework up to standard and your teachers will notify you by that. If not, they can, they'll push it back to you and you'll have to uh, complete it to, for, you know, standard up to their standards and attending Zooms as much as possible or just being in communication and being engaged. If you show that, show that, that you're trying to do that to the best of your ability, um, I don't see any reason why you cannot get a passing grade for the fourth quarter. And remember, that's one quarter, right? So, I mean, it, realistically, you could have nailed all three quarters and, and quarter four is not going to play a huge role in you passing or failing. We hope people stay engaged and we hope people stay curious during this time. Um, there's always all this discussion with teachers about motivation and is it all for the grade or is it because students do want to learn? And I would say most of us know that students really do want to learn and it's not just about the grade. Um, but in all reality, it's one quarter out of four. And so I think it's going to be pretty easy to pass a class. However, that said, we want to make sure that you're ready for the next year, you're ready for the next course, you're ready for college or whatever you have planned after high school, and that you stay engaged and you stay curious. And the last question we have today is why do I have to go to calculus? <laughs> I think that sort of segues from the last question. Uh, maybe you really don't. Maybe you had an A the first three semesters and you may not really need uh, to pass that fourth quarter. But my guess is that if you are in calculus, you are still curious and you still want to do well and you still want to know the content and you still care about what either um, people next year in your college of choice think of how you finished a year or you think you want to, you know, you want the teacher to know that you're curious and you're hardworking. So realistically, you may not need to pass quarter four of calculus, but I'm pretty sure that you want to. Um, and we hope that you do have that, you know, that kind of intrinsic motivation to study and to learn that probably got you really far in high school already. So you don't need to go. But and I one that Mr. Innes will be really upset if you're not there. <laughs> Do it for Mr. Innes, exactly. Or Ms. And Ms. Flanders. Yeah. All righty, I think that's all the questions we have. So thank you, Ms. Dingledye and Mr. Light for joining thank us. You. Thank you, Megan. Thank you, Lauren. And also thank you to all you sign makers out there. If you haven't seen them, please drive by the hospital or stop and shop or the high school. Reliable. Where else, Mr. Light? Kronigs, post office, police stations, fire, fire stations. Just yes. saying thank you to all the people on the front lines working so hard to uh, you know, keep our life as normal as possible. And thank you to Mr. Light and Ms. Coogan and the students who helped organize that. It's a great, great effort. Thanks, Lauren and Megan. A reminder for seniors, please sign on the Naviance and update plans for next year. Contact Cindy and Guidance if you have any questions. Now Health and Wellness with Bella, who's here to talk about exercise, followed by Nell with a challenge video. Regular exercise may reduce the risk of acute respiratory distress syndrome, a major cause of death in patients with the COVID-19 virus, a top exercise researcher reports. He is urging people to exercise based on his findings, which also suggests a potential treatment approach. Here's Nell Coogan with a new challenge to get exercising. Hi everybody, it's Nell Coogan, Miss Coogan here. Um, Walking West Chop was just running. I have a challenge for MVRHS community, that means Students, alumni, staff, um, the greater community of Martha's Vineyard. Let's get out there and celebrate and honor the Boston Marathon. It's not happening this year, 2020, so let's do it our way. 26.2 miles, walking, running, rollerblading, biking, any combination. On your own as an individual or as a team. Once you get 26.2, take a picture of yourself crossing that finish line and or a video. 
tag the members of your team if you've got more than yourself and send it to rjo at mvrhs.org or uh, tag us on Instagram, mvrhs underscore, uh, by Sunday, okay? So that we can get your names and your accomplishments into next week's grapevine. Let's get out there and get your exercise. Feel good about yourselves and this community. And honor the marathon. Bye-bye. Thank you, Bella and Nell. Now we have Jackson with a fitness challenge update. The push-up contest is still going on. If you were tagged, I expect to see you do it. If Craig Uhas, Mike Muzel, and Mr. Fiorito can do it, you can do it also. If you don't want to post on your social media, email it to rjo at mbrhs.org and we will post it for you. Now we have a short video from the girls hockey team. Thanks, Jackson. Hope everyone is staying active while in quarantine. Next up, we have Emily Gazaniga with a high school view update. Hi, everyone. This is Emily Gazaniga, co-editor-in-chief of the High School View with a weekly article update. This week, we have Brooke Crocker writing about SAT and AP testing. We have Sarah Creato writing about seniors' feelings on prospective tradition cancellations. We have Jaden Edelman writing a comical narrative about a trip to the grocery store. And we have myself and Chloe Combra writing about the environmental impacts of COVID-19 on the vineyard. If you're interested, please check these articles out on the MV Times website under the community tab. They will all be posted this Tuesday. If anyone is interested in joining the High School View staff, we're always looking for new members. Even if writing isn't your thing, there's tons of different ways to get involved. If you're interested, please feel free to reach out to myself at 774-563-563. 9489. We meet every Monday at 2.30 via Zoom. Thank you. Thanks, Emily. Now here is Violet to talk to you about the Vineyard Conservation Society High School Art Competition for you to get involved in. We are living in an unusual time that calls for adjustments to our social, academic, and commercial lives. All of these changes affect our relationships with the world around us. The Vineyard Conservation Society is still holding its 2020 High School Art of Conservation competition. This year's theme is Solace and Insight. VCS is asking student artists to relax, spend some time outside, and share what they find there. Now more than ever, our community's commitment to conserving land and our access to a wide array of beaches, woods, and trails has a powerful impact on our daily life. Protecting open space and our quality of life is the very heart of the work at Vineyard Conservation Society. Submissions for the competition are due digitally by 9 a.m. on Friday, May 15th. They can be photography, painting, drawing, sculpture, video design, written word, or any other artistic expression. Please send submissions to slook at vineyardconservation.org. Questions to consider and more information can also be found at www.vineyardconservation.org. Back to you guys. Thank you, Violet. That sounds awesome. Up next is an update from Student Council with Emily Gazaniga. Hi everyone, Student Council has a few quick project updates to share with the MVRHS community. First, we have partnered with Island Cleanup Project to start the Quarantine Cleanup Initiative. With a lot of people taking daily walks with all the free time on their hands, we thought this was the perfect opportunity to encourage faculty and students to bring a trash bag with them and pick up as much litter as possible. So far, our bag count is at 11, and we're trying to reach 100 bags by the tentative return back to school on May 4th. For more information, check out at MV Cleanup on Instagram. In other news, Student Council is putting together a thank you video for all first responders on the island, and we need the help of the MVRHS community. 
please take a five to 10 second video of yourself thanking any and all first responders for their service during the COVID-19 pandemic and email them to mvthankyou at gmail.com. The deadline is this Friday, April 24th. This is a super easy and impactful way to acknowledge all the time, energy, and work our community members have put into our safety and health. Be on the lookout for an email with more information this week, and do not hesitate to ask myself or Mr. Howen any questions if they arise. Thank you. Thanks again, Emily. And now we have a blast from the past with Hope and Haley interviewing high school graduates. Hi, I'm Katie Morse. I graduated last year and I'm currently a freshman at Northeastern. Okay, what made you want to travel abroad for your first semester of college? Um, so when I was accepted to Northeastern, they have an option where, um, well, I guess the way I was accepted is on the condition that I go abroad my first semester. So I didn't really have a choice if I wanted to go to Northeastern, um, which was my number one school. So I decided to go for it. Um, and I had the option between, I think it was eight different locations. And I chose London, England, and I'm really glad I did. I had the best time. Um, it was definitely um, really anxiety provoking uh, leading up to leaving and going abroad, um, especially for so long. But um, I'm really glad that I did it. And so I guess the thought process behind it was that it was a once in a lifetime opportunity um, and that I was going to be able to travel a lot and just have some really cool experiences. So, yeah. Would you, Would you recommend, recommend it? it? Yes, I would. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay, hope. Oh. Am I asking the next one? Okay. What was the application process like when you were applying to college? Um, I only applied to five schools. I know that's like kind of average, maybe a little bit less than average, but for me, I just knew regionally where I wanted to apply. I wanted to apply mostly in New England, which is funny because then I ended up going away um, for the first semester, but um, so I kind of focused on like where I wanted to go to school and then the schools that interested me there. Um, for Northeastern, they don't have a um, supplemental essay. So that was just like an easy application. A few others I wrote some essays for, but the process itself was pretty straightforward, I guess. Um, yeah. Okay. Um, what advice do you have for upcoming seniors about the college application process? Um, I would just suggest, for me, I know, okay, for me, I like toward schools and then I apply to them. Some people like to get accepted first and then tour them. For me, I felt like it made more sense since I was looking locally to tour them first and that way I saved time and energy when applying to schools because I knew which ones I didn't want to apply to. For some people, if they want to like apply to schools in like, California or places that they can't necessarily really travel too easily I think it makes more sense to apply first and then tour if they get in yeah. but I would say just like kind of know what you want to do in that sense um, and then don't like put energy and effort into it but don't stress yourself out because ultimately it's gonna work out for the best uh, I know that's so easy for someone to say who's been through it but um, I mean everyone like that I'm friends with I was really happy with where they ended up and I think that you'll just kind of know what's uh, meant for you so any other what made you pick Northeastern? Yeah. Healy. <laughs> <laughs> Say it again. <laughs> what made you pick Northeastern? Um, I really wanted to be in a city, um, and that's a big school, so I was kind of looking forward to expanding my horizons a little bit. Also, they have a lot of different ways to kind of construct your time in school. So for me, I obviously already went abroad um, in the fall, but I'm also going to be doing co-ops which are basically when you stop taking classes for six months and you do a full-time job so next spring from January to June I'll be working full-time and I'll do that probably two or three times so you can either go for four years or five years or go abroad or do summer classes I mean it's really up to you how you want to construct your time so I really liked the idea of like getting work experience and figuring out what I want to do with my degree and if I even want to do my degree in that field that I'm working in or whatever. So I like that it was very fluid and that you could kind of make it how you wanted to make it and also just being in the city at a big school. When you were thinking of what you wanted to apply for and where you wanted to apply, was it like an easy decision on what you wanted to do? Um, I actually 
applied undeclared to all the colleges I applied to. So I technically didn't declare my major until this past spring and I'm not fully like entered into, I declared a combined major of business and communications. So I'm entered into the business school this following summer. So um, for me, I loved being undeclared. So like I didn't have any idea what I wanted to do. And the program at Northeastern is very structured in the sense that you can explore a lot of different areas, but you don't have to do like one science class, one English class, one like philosophy or anything like that. It's very much just like do what is interesting to you. And if you like that, like let's move forward. But otherwise, like if your school that you're looking at has the option to go in undeclared, I would do some research and see if it's in a way that you want to explore. And if it is, go for it because I feel like in that sense, I had a better understanding of the classes that I could take at Northeastern. And like if the other classes were interesting to me and if that's a route I wanted to take. So um, yeah, I didn't declare until the spring, so I had some time to think about it. All right, good, because I have no idea what I'm doing. Yeah, and there's so many people. I mean, I know they say that a lot, but like genuinely, like a lot of people don't know what they want to do or they think they do, and then they get to school and they take the classes and they find out it's not really for them. Mm -hmm. I have a lot of friends in the program who still don't know what they want to do, and they like you can kind of just do it whenever you want at my school, but I don't know how other schools work, but I would recommend it. Well, like for my, mine's just like an interesting situation, I guess. I was only really on campus for like, two months, so I don't really know <laughs> exactly um, a lot about the college experience yet, but I would say if you're looking at alternative routes and not necessarily going into classes right out of high school, take the time to kind of research it. It's really worth it. I mean, for me, I was still like tracking to graduate at the same time as my peers, but I had an opportunity that was really unique and really helped me feel more grounded going into my spring semester. So. I think if you're looking at like looking at doing a gap year or working a little bit first, um, definitely take the time to see if that's something you want to do because I'm really glad that I did some traveling um, before going to Northeastern, but I'm really happy with where I am now. So yeah. Thanks Hope and Haley. And thank you Katie for coming back to help answer questions. Now here's Violet with something to look forward to from the performing arts department. The Theater 2 class and the MVRHS Performing Arts Department are organizing a series of live virtual coffee houses. If you are interested in performing or learning more, please email me at 20cabv at mvrhs.org. Thanks, Violet. Now here's Amani with an update from the Food Pantry fundraiser. We raised over $1,000 for the Island Food Pantry, so thank you to those of you that donated and supported us, and thank you for helping us make a difference. Thanks, Amani. And thank you so much to everyone who donated. It does not go unnoticed and helps so many families during this tough time. Thanks for watching. Follow us on Instagram and at COVIDFreeMV. And remember, you, you heard, heard it through the, the grapevine. grapevine.